Hey everybody, welcome back to Speed Dating for Ghosts. Last time we visited the Room of Black for the first time and we helped Gary figure out how he died. Let's see what waits for us this time, huh? Hey Fran, good to see you. I like that the cursor is a little skull hand, it, skeleton hand, it's cute. You return to the Room of Black. The speed dating rounds have wrapped up, but some ghosts are still hanging around. It's Hattie time! You arrive at Queen Mary's to meet Hattie for your date. It's 7.04 a.m. You're a little late. Looking around, this could be any nursing home. Yellowed walls, stained drop ceilings. Supply carts line the corridors alongside the odd, empty IV stand. The sun's not quite up, but the residents sure are. Walking the halls to get a bit of exercise. Chatting over weak decaf in the dining room next to reception. You came! Welcome to Queen Mary's. My home. What do you think? It's kind of sad, honestly. I can see how you'd see it that way. To me, it's a place of rest. A waiting room for the afterlife. Behind Hattie, an old woman hangs up the, lo the lobby phone. The woman begins to cry. Her son. Probably making more excuses not to visit. Can we do anything? Not unless you possess her son. Then March is sorry about down here. Hattie laughs. Please don't actually do that. It won't help. Besides, there's someone I want you to meet. Hattie floats off down the left corridor. All these corridors look the same, but she knows exactly where she's going. You pass a number of open doors, glancing inside. Some residents watch TV from their beds. Others just stare out their windows, or at the walls. Most rooms are bare, a few are decorated. There are tall plants, fine wood furniture, in one room you spot a record collection. Essential possessions transplanted to make this place feel more like home. At the far end of a long hall, Hattie stops and turns to you. So, I know this is probably obvious, but... We're here to see Milton. He was my partner for 47 years. Oh, that's so sweet. If you think I'm a firecracker, Milton's all sparks. You'll like him, I think. He's been doing worse lately. Is he sick? He's just old. The little things stack up when you're old. Eventually, one kills you. I've been spending a lot of time here. It has him concerned. Milton says I'm hanging on to the past. He wants me to make friends who are... more like me. Ghosts, he means. I want to show him that I met a good one. I want him to meet you. It will make him so happy. Hattie turns to go into Milton's room. Good morning, Millie. Inside is an empty bed, neatly made. Milton is gone. Oh, no. Hattie frantically searches the room. She spots the chart at the foot of the bed. This says... This says he had an aneurysm. He was taken to the hospital. She looks at you with fear in her eyes. I... have to go. I can come with you. I'd... like that. I know it's a lot to ask. But I'm scared to do this alone. You arrive at the hospital with Hattie. She floats behind the reception counter to locate Milton's room. Second floor. Intensive care. Milton's room is dim. A reedy old man with a thick mustache lies on the bed, motionless. It's quiet except for the steady whoosh and click of a machine by his side. A ventilator connected to a tube run down his throat. The machine is breathing for him. 
Oh no. Milton. She looks around as if he might have already left his body. They were supposed to let him go. Hattie looks at Milton's chart. It says he was found unresponsive. No signs of brain activity. But I still feel his presence. Don't you? I feel it. But where is he? Is he lost somewhere? Is he trapped in there? Oh, Milton. His sister has power of attorney. He didn't want this. He signed a form that said do not resuscitate. He didn't want this. Howdy looks up. I'm sorry I dragged you here. I know this must be quite awkward. If you don't mind, I'd like to be alone with Milton now. I understand. Thank you for understanding. As you step into the hall to leave, you can hear Hattie saying something at Milton's bedside. There's so much more, my love. Just you wait. And that's that. Hattie, Spirit of Compassion, Years Alive, 1922 to 2010, Cause of Death, Heart Failure. Throughout her long life, Hattie always put others first. Though she never had any kids of her own, she worked for more than 40 years as an elementary school librarian before retiring to a life of gardening and jam making alongside her longtime partner, Milton. After Hattie took a hard fall, she and Milton were both accepted into Queen Mary's nursing home, where Hattie lived out her final days helping her fellow residents any way she could. Bit of a quiet one this time. We'll see what else the Room of Black has in store for us next time. See you then!